Chapter 2, Making Decisions is Not Always Tough. I must admit, Sophia, you're on a roll. You've gotten really good at drawing with Python. You can now make your turtle move forward and backward, as well as turn left or right. But what if you wanted the turtle to decide whether it wants to turn left or right, or how many steps it wants to move forward? Is that even possible? Of course, if you use if statements, also known as a condition statement. But first, I think it's about time we started making our codes more interactive. We want to allow the user to have a say. So, we allow the user to give their input using the input function. Also, from henceforth, we want to type out our code all at once and then run it, instead of executing line by line. For this, we simply click on File, and then select New from the drop-down menu. The advantage of this is also that we can save our entire code to view it again later on. Now, let's learn how to use the input function. I'll type out the code, and I want you to run it as the user, all right? To run the program, first save it with a name of your choice, and just press the F5 key. I don't have a good feeling about this, but let's see. Here goes. Jacob, I knew you were pulling a prank on me. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. So, now we can utilize the user input to make our code more useful and interesting. Let's move on to the if statements. The syntax for an if statement is like this. The condition here can be any statement that needs to be true for the action to be taken. Let me give you an example. Let's say you just want your code to ask for a name, and if it's Sophia, it tells you you're pretty. I like the sound of that. You see here, after taking the input from the user, Python stores the user's input in the variable name. Then, the if statement analyzes to see if the value in name is the same as Sophia. You notice I put two equal to signs in the condition. When you do comparisons, you use a double equal sign to tell Python that this is a comparison and not an assignment of value. After comparison, if the answer is true, Python executes the next few lines. Notice that I've indented the lines in the action part to tell Python that these are all part of the if statement's actions. Make sure that all the lines are indented by the same amount of spaces. Now, let's execute this code. Would you do the honors? No pranks this time. Why, thank you. But what if I had entered some other name? Then the condition in the if statement would have resulted in a false, and the lines in the action part would not have executed. See for yourself. Run it again. See? Nothing happened. But what if I wanted it to do something else if the answer is false? In that case, we use another variation of the if statement. It's called the if-then-else statement, like this. Now if I run it and enter something else, see what happens. Wow! Let's try another with numbers. Let's say you want to ask the user how many bars of chocolate they eat in a week. And depending on the input, the user is given a response. Notice what I wrote in the second line. You know why I did that? because the input function mostly accepts the user input in the string format. But we want to use this input to compare it with another integer. Python will not allow you to compare a string to an integer. That's why we have to first convert the string value from the user into an integer value using this int function. Then we can do our comparison. Now let me run it.
Mostly in the condition part of the if statement, a comparison of sorts is done. In addition to checking if a value is equal to another, you can also do other comparisons. Here's a list of comparisons that you can use in the condition part. Now what if I want to tell Python to print one thing if your name is Sophie, another thing if your name is Jacob, and something else altogether for everyone else? In that case, we use yet another variation. It's called the ELIF condition statements. I'll show you an example. Here, Python will first check if the name entered is Sophia. If the answer is false, it will check if the name is Jacob. If true, it will execute the next three lines. If false, it will do only execute the indented lines after else. You can have as many ELIF conditions as you require. Let me run this. See, after it encounters the first ELIF condition, it finds it to be true so it prints these three lines. Let me try running it with another input. <laughs> nice! What if I want more than one comparison to be done together? Like if I want Python to see if the name is Sophia or Jacob, and if so, I want it to say something like Rodriguez Family Rules. And if it is someone else, I want it to say, Go away, you don't belong here. That's a good question. You'll be happy to know that you can even combine more than one comparison in the condition. Let me type out a program to demonstrate your problem. Here, when a name is entered, Python checks if either of the conditions in the if statement is true. If so, it executes the first print statement. And if it finds that neither of the two conditions match, meaning if the name is neither Sophia nor Jacob, it executes the print statement after the else part. Let's execute this and you'll see. You can also use an AND operator instead of OR. For example, if you need someone's age to be between 1 and 12 to be a child, and between 13 and 19 to be a teenager, this is what we'll do. Here, after it gets the user's age, Python first converts it to an integer and checks if it's less than 13. If true, it prints, you are a child. If false, it moves on to the elif statement and checks if the age is more than or equal to 13 and also less than or equal to 19. That means it checks if the age is in between 13 and 19. If true, it says you are a teenager. If false, it just goes to the else statement that prints you are an adult. Let me run this. You see, 13 doesn't fall into the first category, but it does fall into the second category. Here, 25 doesn't fall into the first category. It doesn't fall into the second one either. So it qualifies only for the else statement. One more thing before wrapping up. So far, we've entered strings and numbers as values and used them to compare. But what if we want Python to first see if a variable has a value in it or not before comparing? In such cases, we use the none value. A variable with a none value is an empty variable. In fact, an empty variable is different from a variable having a value zero. But why use it? Well, programmers often use it when they want to define all the variables together in the beginning, but don't want to give a variable any value just yet. The use is simple. Let me just give an example. Let me run it. That's it. Now, question time. I'm ready. Question. Type out a program to ask the user for a password. If the password is correct, it will say, correct, you may enter. 
If it's wrong, the program will say, wrong, sorry, you may not enter. Okay, here goes. Very good. Notice that even if you'd entered ABC123 in capital letters, you would have got the response as wrong password. This is because comparison operators are case sensitive. Next question. Type out a program that asks the user for their total marks in school and then gives an opinion on the user's performance. Like this. 95 to 100, excellent. 75 to 94, very good. 55 to 74, satisfactory. Below 55, you should work harder. Hmm, I feel a lot of L-if statements coming up. Let me run it. Great. Last question. Type out a program that asks the user whether they want the Python turtle to draw a square or a circle. If the user wants a square, ask for the size of a side of the square. If they want a circle, ask for the radius of the circle. Remember to first import the turtle module. Whoa, here goes. Now, if I run it, that's great. You initialized the value of size to none in the beginning to declare it to Python that you intended to use it later. You then asked the user to enter what they wanted to draw and in what dimensions. You used elif statements and the turtle to draw the shapes accordingly and provided an else statement in case the user entered something other than circle or square. A very finely done job indeed. In the next lesson, I'll be teaching you about loops. All right.